Turn your volume down. Oh, you can hear me? Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. I am so excited to do this. This is actually how I started and built my entire business. I used to do these free information seminars twice a month. And I did them for about 35 years. And that's how I built the entire business of what I do. So to be able to do it like you guys do it in this century, you know, on Zoom is very exciting for me uh, to be able to reach all of you. Um, basically, what I like to do is kind of explain to people the reasons that I've lived the way I have for the past 50 years, and maybe why you might want to join me on this program. Uh, here's the deal. I don't believe there's a good or a bad or a right or a wrong or a yes or a no or this way or the highway. I just think there's new information that we all need so that we don't live with a ceiling like, oh, you know, I become a vegetarian, I'm done. I become a vegan, I'm done. I become a raw Buddhist, I'm done. There's always more to learn and grow and evolve. And this is what I've been doing for the past 50 years. So I just love to share it with you. So I started out, actually, I was a regular American eating kind of person, you know, a typical Black family with the ribs and you know, that was our, our um, meals throughout the week, but we did do all home cooking. We weren't McDonald's and, you know, all the fast food places, but we are talking about, you know, 70 something years ago. Anyway, so I grew up with a typical, I grew up with a typical um, diet and uh, I had a typical experience living that way because I had I was, had every allergy known to man. I had terrible skin. I was tired all the time. And as I grew up and older, my menstrual cycle came. I had the worst periods on the planet. I was good maybe one week out of the month, right? The week before, uh, I was miserable. The week during, I was miserable. And the week after. So I had one good week out of the month. I mean, my life was a mess. Plus, to add to all of that, I was constipated all the time. From the time I was a baby, I was constipated. And the doctors used to tell my mother, well, that's just your system. So I knew something had to be different, but I didn't know what or how. And my mother uh, kind of introduced me to carrot juice, you know, uh, when I was about 20, maybe, no, I was about 19 or 20, my mother introduced me to carrot juice. And for the first time in my life, I started going to the bathroom, right? It was the most wonderful thing in the world. You don't understand, folks. If you're not going to the bathroom all day, every day, you got a problem because what goes in must come out. And if it doesn't, where to go? What's it doing to you? Anyway, I started going to the bathroom and lo and behold, I started going to the bathroom. My skin started clearing up and I just started feeling better. I wasn't as tired all the time. And that began my journey. Unfortunately, during that time, my mother got very sick. She was diagnosed with cancer and it took them about seven months for her to die. I, they killed her actually, because she didn't die from cancer. She died from the chemo. But I witnessed that and I took care of her and it was pretty, it was pretty difficult and hard to watch this beautiful, vibrant woman go to 89 pounds bald and discolored because she had radiation. And back then they even knew less of what they were doing with the chemo and the different therapies. So she really died a horrible death. And I was with her and I watched it and I witnessed it. Her mother also had died a horrible death. My mother's mother died at 50 and my great grandmother, my mother's grandmother died at 60. So women were not known for longevity in my family. And uh, I was kind of headed in the same direction. <laughs> so anyway, the carrot juice kind of saved my life. Although I don't recommend that you just drink carrot juice. It's way too much sugar for our systems, but I didn't know that back then. By the way, I'm gonna be coming up with some lots of classes for you and a sugar uh, cleanse is gonna be one of them coming down the line. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, I was drinking all this juice and I was just fortunate enough to meet the right people at the right time. I became a vegetarian, not because I decided meat was bad or what we were doing to the animals later on that came, but uh, it, was, it was an organic kind of a thing. I was uh, making some, I'd given up the uh, red meat because I was drinking the carrot juice. And then I was making chicken soup one day for the family. I've always loved to cook. Cooking has always been my thing. And I threw the chicken in the pot and kind of forgot about it. And when I went back to put the vegetables in, the skin was floating over here, the bones were floating over here. And I really became repulsed by the whole thing. 
had I not been drinking all the living vegetable juice, I don't think I would have had that reaction. So this is what I like to remind people organically. It's not a natural human instinct for us to kill and eat dead flesh. We've just learned how to do it. So organically, I just couldn't stand looking at it. I couldn't stand smelling it. And there went chicken. And so I just decided to give up the fish altogether. And, but I was still doing dairy, by the way. I was still doing the cow secretions. And, um, you know, the allergies were all there, what was going on. Well, later on, I met Dr. Wigmore, uh, became a total vegan, and then went from vegan to raw food. And here I am at 73. I don't know what illness is. I don't know what tiredness is. Uh, there's no filters on here, so you can see I haven't done any work yet. Maybe I will at 95. But, um, you know, it just organically happened to me. And this is how I like to work with people. Once I met Dr. Wigmore and I started her detoxification program, she had one of the first detox centers in the country. And I don't know if all of you realize that she was the one that brought the raw foods, the living foods to us in our time. And she also introduced us to wheatgrass. This was Dr. Wigmore, and then later on, Victoria Scovens has joined her. And this is how the whole movement started that so many of us are following now and benefiting from. Dr. Wigmore had terminal, well, she started out as a diabetic, and they were going to amputate her leg. And then she had terminal cancer, where she healed herself of all of these things. And this is how she developed her programs. I was fortunate enough to meet her. I went to her place in Boston. I did a detoxification with her and the rest is history. Uh, from there, I used to bring people, bring her to Chicago. We had several of these centers around the country. We had the Creative Health Institute in Michigan. Uh, you had Optimal Health Institute in San Diego where they did Dr. Wigmore's detoxification program. Anyway, brought her to Chicago, she would speak, uh, then I would go with her around the country, oh, not around the country, go to Michigan and speak with her. And I just became a total devotee and fan and learned everything I could from her. In the middle of all of this, later on I got married, my husband was an uh, importer, so we used to go to Hong Kong twice a year. So I started studying with Chinese doctors and, and researchers over there. So I kind of put everything together and created a detoxification program that I have been doing for the past 40, 45 years. And I do believe detoxification is the most important thing that we can do on a consistent basis for ourselves. It's wonderful if you become a vegan. It's wonderful if you become a vegetarian. It's even wonderful if you become a pescatarian because that means you're on a journey. You're in the process of changing and learning. You don't necessarily go from A to Z overnight. It is a process. And this is what I like to remind people. There's so many things out there like, you know, like people are eating steak today and they do a juice fast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think it's dangerous. I don't think it works. I think that we have to, and I know everything is instant. And I love my Instagram, but life is an instant. There is a process to it. And I think when we put ourselves in the midst of the process and enjoy the journey, and we just kind of move along with the flow, we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be right. We don't even have to have a label. We don't have to be a raw foodist, a vegan. You just have to be a part of life in the process of evolving and changing. I think I did a little blog, a little note last week of some kind where I don't believe we're here to be rich, perfect, uh, big influencers on Instagram, perfect kids. I think we're here to evolve and whatever comes our way to help in that evolution, you're right on point. So back to the food, because I'm sure that's why a lot of you are here, but I want you to know that's only a piece of the pie. It isn't the whole pie. Uh, you don't go from A to Z overnight. And if you can allow yourself the process, it can really be a joyful journey. You know, if you're still, you know, eating meat sometimes, well, you need to say, well, you know what, I'm going to give myself a chance to get rid of the meat because it's really detrimental to human beings. But I'm going to throw in real quickly, the cow secretions, the, uh, what you call the cheese and eggs and butter and this kind of, is even worse than the meat for us. Isn't that amazing? And it's in everything. So it's so difficult to eliminate it unless you become a detective and really pay attention. And, and I guarantee you, even if you don't do my detox, even if you don't do anything else, if you just give up the dairy, I'm gonna call it that once, but it's really cow secretions with pus and blood and all kinds of stuff in it. 
you will see a difference in your body within one week. Cause and effect is what rules the universe. And what you do is going to have an effect on everything in your body. I don't care if you go, well, I just do a little bit of this, or I just do a little bit of that. If it wasn't intended to go in here, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, it's going to create an imbalance that's going to translate into a challenge that you call, I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, Crohn's disease, endometriosis, headaches, whatever it is. What the challenge that your body manifests is just telling you, wake up, wake up. You're giving me too much of what I'm not supposed to have and not enough of what I am supposed to have. It's that simple. And we come from different backgrounds. You know, I don't have great DNA. I couldn't do a lot of negative things that some people do. I always say very heavy people that get very large, you got great genes because if I ate what you ate to get that large, I would be dead at this point. <clears throat> So different people have different capacities to take in the, um, the negativity. But if you can find a way to remove it from your life, it's amazing. It's totally amazing what you will gain for yourself. So you know what? I don't know if you're still doing them, but try one week with no cow secretions. I guarantee you, you'll see a difference. I used to have a guy that came to me for one-on-ones. And he had uh, sinus operations every year for, you know, he'd get it once a year, but it would come back and, he, and uh, he'd have to go in for the operation. We got him off dairy. He did a great detox and it was amazing. You wouldn't recognize him. He stopped having the sinus problems and everything else. Remember, everything your body manifests is just trying to slap you awake and tell you, you're giving me the wrong things. Headaches, oh, everybody, you know, you have aspirin, you have a million things. A headache is the biggest warning to tell you toxicity, toxicity. It's like a little alarm bell hitting you in the head. I'm toxic, I'm toxic, all right? And some people with their migraine headaches, you know, it just takes one little food or something to take you over the edge or a little bit of stress to take you over the edge. And there the headache is there. And you take, you have a headache. And so you take an aspirin and the headache goes away. You don't make any changes in your life till the next time the headache comes and you take another aspirin. But let me ask you this, was your body lacking an aspirin? Is that why the headache went away? I don't think so. I think it's because it hid the problem to come out later as something else. So to me, once you start cleansing and detoxing, you eliminate all those. I'm 73. I don't know what a headache is. I don't know what a sore throat is. I don't know. I don't know what being sick. I have no fear of getting a virus of any kind from Corona on because my internal environment is so strong and it's not strong just because I'm a raw Buddhist, a vegan or a vegetarian. Cause I'll tell you, I know some overweight vegetarians, some sick vegans, some unhappy and miserable raw Buddhists, you know? So the food isn't the whole deal. It's breaking down the layers of toxicity. We have a million, a trillion cells in there that are programmed. When you're at birth, all your cells are programmed with what to do. You don't have to tell your body time to yawn, time to blink. Your body knows what to do. But what happens is we build up layer and layer and layer of toxicity. Do, are we showing that on the screen? The, the layers of toxicity, this is a trillion cells, okay? So we build up layers and layers of toxicity around that cell. And it's the layers of toxicity, it's those gases that are going into your organs in your body and feeding you. We don't actually live off of chunks of food. We're supposed to chew our food until it's a liquid and it's the gases from the liquids that are that's feeding you. So if you got a lot of stinky stuff going on, that's what's feeding your body, all right? So when you cleanse and detox your body, then, oh, there it is. When you cleanse and detox your body, you start to break down these layers of toxicity and you get to the core again. Do we get to the core in a lifetime? I don't know. I'm still working on it, right? Because even though I'm vegan 50 years, raw food for over 35 years, I don't drink or smoke or do drugs, I still... I'm driving a car behind buses. I'm pumping my own gas, right? I'm around negative people. I try to do organic, but you know what? The organic farm is right next door to the, uh, the regular farm, the pig farm. So the wind doesn't say I'm gonna stop from blowing over there. So we're living in a very toxic environment. And so to me, cleansing and detoxing your body is the most important thing we can do. So we start to break down the layers. But as you start to break down the layers, 
a lot of the old stuff. Oh, I love to, let's talk about this right away because <laughs> that's a great one. We because I do this as much for vanity as I do for health. So when you detox your body, it's amazing. Everything starts to change. I always tell people at the beginning of the classes, look in the mirror very closely and you're going to see it's like a veil is lifted off of your face. Part of the reason I've done no work or surgery, aside from the fact I'm terrified of uh, doctors and that kind of thing uh, for those things, but everything on your face is a indication of what's going on internally. So this little line that we get here, the 11s that everybody's putting the stuff in to get rid of, well, this is your spleen pancreas. Your body's telling you way too much sugar and carbs, right? These lines that we get under here, I used to ask my mother, didn't, oh, I like where that looks, didn't, <laughs> didn't I get any sleep when I was a baby? Well, this is your adrenals and your kidneys, all right? So it's eating late at night, it's caffeine, it's stress, these are journals. These lines here, this is your, do I have a picture for them to see? No. Um, these lines here, um, this is your uh, liver and um, your liver and your colon, your intestine. So one side is usually deeper than the other side for some reason. And then those lines that you get across your forehead, you're not a deep thinker. It's mucus. Okay. So literally at the end of my detox classes, people look and feel, I don't know, 10, 15 years younger on a regular basis. Um, what, do we have memories picture? We have one lady that came to me. She had been a vegetarian for 25 years and she was doing pretty good, but she was having some challenges and memory, uh, memory, uh, no, this, okay, memory. We'll go back to memory. I thought I was this talking about joy. Oh, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> no, we'll do memory. Okay. Memory. Memory had been a large girl her entire life and she came to me to lose a little weight. Well, she chose to do my detox class every other month for eight months. She did the class without fail because uh, I used to teach them every other month. I didn't do them every month. She did it every other month. And on the in-between, she would come in for our raw desserts, whole pies, whole cakes, the whole thing. But at the end of eight months, this is how she looked. Have we got it? Mm -hmm. At the end of eight, this is how memory looked. I swear to God. And I know some of you may say, well, I don't want to be that skinny, but this is the size she was meant to be. If you're carrying any excess weight, I'm so happy to be a beautiful, large woman for you, but you have to understand it's indicating an imbalance and that imbalance is going to come out at some point to haunt you. You're lucky that you just put on the weight, but because a lot of people end up with cancer and other things, but it eventually cause and effect this is the rules of the universe will catch up to you. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's do Joette Waters. She's the one that had been a vegetarian for 25 years when she came to work with me. You see, she's beautiful, but she did the detox. And I think it was after the second or third one, and she was losing her hair. After the second or third detox, this is how she looked. You see, she literally came alive with the living foods and the whole class we were doing. She actually, the hair, do we have her hair? Mm -hmm. Her hair started to grow. Everything changed after she did our detox for sev on several occasions. Let's see, who else do we have? We have, oh, um, Kimberly. When Kimberly started with me, she was on about eight different medications from blood pressure as she was insulin dependent, diabetic. She was on so many different medications. I think it was after the fourth, after the first detox, she went from, uh, injections to the pill for her insulin and eventually after four or five detoxes she went off all her medications and this is how Kimberly looks after doing our detox class everything changed for her it was incredible uh, John came to me this was a young man and the guys aren't always so quick to come and you may think well what's wrong with him he didn't feel overweight. I, um, he had a few challenges. I think he had high blood pressure. He came and did the detox at the end of class. This is how he looked, okay? So it's bringing your body to where it's supposed to be because we forget, we get so caught up in the world and because everybody is walking around whining, complaining about something, oh, I need to lose weight, oh, I have headaches, oh, I'm tired. We take it as normal. This is not the way we're supposed to live. We're supposed to get challenges along the way and we're supposed to overcome those challenges and move on to what's coming next for us. So I so strongly believe in my cleanse program. I know there are many roads to the top of the mountain and I'm not saying mine is the only one. I will say they'll look very carefully at the teacher you choose. 
Um, I wouldn't go to an overweight nutritionist or I wouldn't go to a sick doctor. I wouldn't go to a ball hairdresser. I wouldn't go to a toothless um, dentist. So the person teaching me to live life to the fullest and get the most out of my body, I'm going to look at that person if they're manifesting what I'm looking for, which is how I found Dr. Wigmore. She could do cartwheels at 87. Anybody that can do a cartwheel at 87, I'm going to follow. I couldn't even do one at 12. So look very carefully. But I would strongly encourage you if you're feeling it, come try mine out. We have a 28 day coming up. You can sign up for it and you can do it at any time. I think it's coming soon, right? I, they don't they give me all this. Huh? Oh, check the link in my bio i'm still learning all this folks see this is i'm getting out of my ceiling of uh, only knowing how to you know do things the way i used to do it check the link in my bio if you have any interest in joining us or if you have any questions for me uh check the link in my bio you can dm me on instagram i love instagram um how else can they reach me is that about it have I gone about 20 minutes? Are we ready for questions? Yeah, or? we're going to have another endless question. Oh, yes, and I have another. I'm going to start doing these regularly again like I used to. I used to do them twice a month, and I'm going to do so. If you have friends or family or anybody that you would like to encourage just to do something different. Remember, I don't think there's a right or a wrong or a good or a bad or a yes or a no or this way or the highway. you got to have a label. It's just about taking in more information so that you can grow and evolve at the rate you're ready to grow. It's your journey, not mine. I'm just going to give you recommendations. It's your journey and you'll find a way to continue on your journey. So I have another uh, free info coming up on the 19th at 5 p.m. if you have friends or family or anybody that you just want to, you know, encourage or hear something different or you know what, you might want to stop in on again too because here's the deal. You need to hear it over and over and over again. They don't just show you one commercial on TV and expect you to get it, right? They show it to you um, tons of times before you kind of like you zombie, you just walk up and you do it. Most of us, you know, we don't even think about it. So it doesn't hurt to hear it over and over again. Oh, Karen, great to be here. Um, my question is, I have a... We're technologically challenged here. Go ahead and start over. You want me to start over? Okay. My question is about um, hemorrhoids. I have one internal and one external. Mm -hmm. So I basically eat a plant-based diet. I don't say vegan because... And it's not all the time, but sometimes I'll go like months without, but then sometimes I'll have fish like twice a month and then I won't have it again for a long time. But basically I do eat a plant-based diet. So, um, but I, if I do the cleanse or raw food diet, would that help clean? Cause it's like, I, I can't do all that doctor stuff they want me to do. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is a perfect question, okay? Because remember I told you, one of my major problems was constipation. Right? I heard that, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it took me almost five years of cleansing and detoxing to regulate my body. Now I'm like a dog. I eat and 20 minutes later, I poop. You know, my body, okay. my, everything is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. One of the things I recommend is you start some digestive enzymes so that your body breaks food down a little bit easier for you. But um, yeah. when I first started cleansing and detoxing, it was a tad painful because we included enemas and implants. But mm -hmm. here's the deal. Uh, it made such a difference within the first detox, they started to change. I had terrible hemorrhoids because I had both of my children through natural childbirth. And so did you have children? Is that how you started or you were constipated? She's extra. Yeah. So, um, I had, um, I, 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 it was horrible and the hemorrhoids, but one thing you can do that can help and Thanksgiving is coming up so it can help, buy some fresh cranberries and blend them up and do little sit baths with it. It will start to, um, make, they will start to help them retreat and they won't be so uncomfortable, but a detoxification program would 
totally changed that for you. It did for me. So I would strongly recommend our process. And I, and I also have another product that could help you in the beginning uh, to start out with. It's an ozonated magnesium that you do at night. And that would start to soften things and make it easier for you to uh, make because it's the pressure. It's everything isn't moving down. You know, you got five feet of colon in there. And if you have a lot of obstructions, it's not easy for things to move through. So the ozonated magnesium would help you tremendously too, I believe it did for me. Um, so my question is, I am anemic and I do take iron, over-the-counter iron, um, because of that to help uh, regulate it. Mm -hmm. And um, I've also been recently diagnosed with fibroids. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even though it's not medically linked to what we eat, I, you know, feel yep. it is, especially for Af African-American women. Mm -hmm. And so what ways is, you know, detoxing beneficial, but also other things that I can consider to help? just kind of align, align my body and as much as possible avoid having to have surgery except as a last resort. Okay, here's the deal. First of all, do you use tampons? No. Okay, good. Because that is, that does help to create the problem. And there's mm -hmm. some things that in skin, um, hyal what is the one, Nancy? Hyaluron what is Hyaluronic it? acid. No, no, it's not that one. Hydrocortisone. Hydrocortisone. If that's in any of your skin products, that also helps to create them, from what I understand. Oh, okay. But the, um, the, and it's like those skin lighteners or the things to make your pigmentation even, you know, as mm -hmm. a black. So those can create them also, but it is directly create, uh, linked to what you're eating. And a good, my good detoxification program would make all the difference in the world. Uh, okay. Dr. Wilson Knight, she was a metal uh, eye doctor. She came with me. How many, she had about three or four fibroids, huge mm -hmm. ones. And she was a doctor and she came in and did my detox class. And I would say after the third or fourth, she didn't, she had huge ones, one the size of a grapefruit. She got rid of them totally with the detox class. There are other things I would add into that, but yes, the detoxification program would help a thousand percent with that in my opinion. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, it is an absolute pleasure to be here with you, Karen. I met you at the Veggie Fest um, last summer, and my husband and I just fell in love with you. <laughs> but um, what I have been experiencing is sleepless nights or restless nights. And it seems like it always happens between 2.30 and 3.30 in the morning. Um, I've been wearing my Fitbit, so that's why I can uh, figure out what time it is. And I looked at the Chinese, I think it's a Chinese medicine chart or something. It said something about the liver. So I was wondering if the detox or juicing or something is going to help me to sleep better so I can have a restful night's sleep. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, what time do you have your last meal? Um, usually I have my last meal anywhere between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Okay, and when you get up, when you wake up around 3, are you getting up to go urinate? Some, sometimes, sometimes, other times I just wake up and I don't get up. You don't have to, all right. So there are a couple of things that could be going on. Yes, uh, what you're eating has a great deal to do with it. And uh, especially if you're eating certain foods later, like, like sweets, sugary things, you know, your dessert or something like that, that's going to create a reaction in your body, number one. But number two, it's bringing the body into balance. Uh, do you poop regularly? Do you go to the bathroom regularly? Yes, I've been vegan three and a half years and that has really helped becoming vegan. Okay, great. Yeah, you just need more internal balance. But I will throw in one other thing. The yogis believe and, and the sages believe that that time between 3.30 is the natural time to wake up to pray and meditate for our connection with the universe. So maybe the universe is knocking in the head saying, lady, there's something else you're supposed to add to all of this. Oh, okay. so a great detoxification program would assist and the ozonated magnesium uh, at night or a product called Calm, if you took it at night, it will make your bowels move a little bit more, but it will get your body in the habit of, of sleeping. But I do believe the detoxification program, I mean, when I'm ready to sleep, I'm out and I'm up every morning at five, 5.30 in the morning, now even earlier actually, naturally. Um, because here's the deal. I know we're taught that you need eight hours of sleep. 
that's not true in my world, okay? Sleep is like death. And do you need to spend all that time in death? You only need to sleep for the body to repair itself. The less repair work, the less sleep. I sleep four and a half hours a night for the past 20 years. I'm not you know, falling apart because I'm not getting eight hours of sleep because I don't need it. My body doesn't need that much repair work. But I would say if you became vegan and you haven't been detoxing, you could and you do need a good detoxification program. My, of course, I'm going to recommend. And by the way, if you can't, uh, in, the link is in my bio. If it doesn't work for you, I have a book that you can purchase on Amazon. Hang on a bit. It's called Soak Your Nuts, The Cleanse. So you can actually order my book online and do it on your own, or you can participate with what we put up online for you. So detox, detox, detox. Like I said, I do it minimum four times a year, minimum. And since I've gotten older, I'm kind of adding a little bit here and there. So while we're talking about the detox, um, there's a couple questions just about the overview of the detox. So um, we have products sort of right next to her. So can you just talk for two minutes? And then we're going to move the question over to uh, Reginald. So, um, so just be ready. Okay. All right. So with my detoxification program that I teach, we each week we do something different and we build on it. So you do the first week we start, I have this wonderful product called the Green Meal. I know there's tons of them on the market now, but I highly recommend this one. I've got chaga root in it, all the greens that we need. And I always say there's a reason God puts so much green on the earth and it isn't for picnics. It's for us to take it internally. So with my detoxification program, we do tons of greens. We do the Green Meal, we do Green Corella, we do Green Kamut. Kame but we don't start everything at once. We start one and then we build on. So each week, like if you're already a vegan, then I ask you to go raw the first week. If you're already vegetarian, I ask you to go vegan for the week. So it depends on where you are, where you start and everybody moves forward. And even if you're a raw foodist, I'm raw food for over 40 years, I still detox four or five times a year. So each week I make a recommendation of what you do, we balance the blood sugar levels. I strongly do not believe, like I said, in eating a regular diet and doing a juice fast the next day. I think it's actually dangerous because the body doesn't actually know it's detoxing, it just thinks it's starving. You know, So when you come off one of those programs, it's very difficult to regulate how much sugar you start craving, sugar you start craving more food, and a lot of people end up gaining more weight afterwards. So um, each week we do something different. I balance your blood sugar levels. Uh, I help you shrink your stomach because by the way, everybody's eating way too much. I, I know some raw foodists that, you know, they have lunch and it's this, it's a bowl. It's like a trough of food. Even that's too much. Hold up your fist, folks. Can you give me that? Whatever size your fist is, that's the size of your stomach. It's a tiny little sack in there. And that's all the food you need. If you knew what I eat in a day, and I know you're going to ask, but it's so little. Some days I get greedy just because I enjoy good stuff, you know, and I like to eat. But I'm rarely hungry, rarely. And when I'm hungry, that's when I eat. I don't have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I eat when my cells signal they need fuel. If I'm out with people, I'll eat before I go. And I say, oh, that looks so beautiful. I'd love to join you. Or if I ate that, I would join. You know, I try to never make anybody feel uncomfortable about their choices because nobody's going to listen to you. Then who want to know what you're doing. But, you know, you, you, you just kind of work around it. So the first week we start one thing. And I hope that you get as much done in that first week. And then we second week and third week. And by the third week, those who choose to do a fast can. And we generally do a minimum of three days, but I've had, I had an 89 year old woman come in. She did 14 days the first time she came in on a walker and she left skipping down the street after her fast. So I kind of give you generals and then I leave it to you to work the program so it works for you because if it's not practical, you're not gonna do it, right? You gotta keep it practical to keep it in practice. Awesome, and I'll just add to that. Um, the program itself is there are some products that come along with it. So if you decide to purchase the program the 28th day, um, you'll have access to Karen's Video Vault. Um, we've got snackable co uh, content, longer form content. We're you know putting together worksheets for you. And I'll just kind of, um, if you see over here, there's just uh, you know a, a small 
a small product line that really helps. And what she does in the videos is kind of walk you through what the combination and, you know, of what these different things will do throughout the day and throughout the week. I've done the program um, once, I'm going to do it again and do it perfectly. There's a lot of information. Um, so that's why we want to give you all of these different resources, including this, this session here today. Um, Reginald, if you're still on, can you unmute yourself? And we will, um, you had a couple questions about irritable bowel, memory issues. So if you can fire away, I see you're off mute. How are you? Hi. Hi. Hi, Karen. It's very Hi, good. you know. Hi there. I've, I've visited your restaurant on a few occasions. I truly enjoyed it. Thank it's you. A new, a new restaurant. Uh, yeah, I, I did have a question about IBS. I've been experiencing IBS issues, <laughs> and I'm wondering if the detox will help me with that. Two thousand percent, in my opinion, two thousand percent. Yes, the IBS, the irritable bowel. I had one client years ago. He was a trader, and his was so bad he'd have to jump off the train before he could make it to work. Uh, he had gone to all kinds of doctors and professionals, and he did our detox class. And I think it was once or twice, and immediately he started to get results though, because it's changing your internal environment. What's creating your problems? And people will say to me, oh, but I can't do that, or I can't do that, or I'm not. But you see, if you keep doing what you're doing, that's how you're going to keep the problem coming. So that's the other beauty of the detox class. It kind of makes a little, you kind of have to stop doing what you're doing, and then you see the results of the change. So yes, I believe it could help. Uh, also, aloe would help you tremendously. Uh, because it kind of helps to seal the where the, the lesions and things are. Aloe could help. And there are a lot of things we could do in addition to the detox, but absolutely, I know it could help. And you had a second question? Beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a sort of a, uh, a memory question because I'm concerned about memory and I, Alzheimer's runs in my family. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm 55 years old, I'm, you know, I'm hey. like, <laughs> 55. <laughs> Okay, well, first of all, that is not unusual in this day and age because one, the mineral content of what we have, even if you're eating vegan, if you, even if you're eating organic, the minerals are not present enough for what we need as human beings living on this planet, like the oxygen levels. We're living in very hostile environment for humans at this point in time, especially if you're in a city. So we have to do everything we can to make up that. And by the way, I don't know if you live in a house I just recently moved to a house in the suburbs and I see the people with the perfect lawns and as I'm walking my dog, I'll go, there's a cancer house, there's a, a, a um, the, the uh, Alzheimer's house because the chemicals that they're using on the lawns and things are creating these problems for us. There are some things you could do like Irish moss, getting more minerals in your system in addition to, and that's part of the detox class. I wouldn't, you wouldn't have to worry in my opinion. Um, like everybody in my family died overweight and with cancer and uh, diabetes. And it's not a concern of mine because I'm detoxing and cleansing and watching my internal environment very carefully. Anybody else? Awesome. Um, Lindsay had a great question um, about detoxing before pregnancy. Lindsay, if you're still on, can you unmute yourself? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I have a question about uh, detoxing right before pregnancy. Thank you that I can um, ask uh, this question to you, Karen. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you. Well, here's the deal. Uh, if you're not pregnant, yes, you could detox. And the detoxification, if you're trying to get pregnant, would actually help. I got quite a few babies with my name on it, and I wasn't in the bedroom because they were trying to get <laughs> pregnant, and they detoxed, and they got pregnant. Uh, but you oh, wow. cannot detox while you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Yes, I know that. Dietary changes, but you cannot do it. But doing it beforehand, that would be the best thing that you could do. For your baby okay thank you great awesome thank you lindsay uh roslyn i thank you i think we answered your question about the 28 day detox um but as is asking a few questions too so either of you want to want to hop in with some questions about the detox and then we'll go to miss deborah um after that sure it's a it's alicia as um 
Thanks for taking my question, Tamara. Um, I guess what I was just unclear about, um, I'm familiar with you, Karen, also from the Veggie um, Fest as well. And I just, I'm, I guess what, uh, what's, I'm can you hear me? Yeah, okay. I guess what's um, not clear to me is just in terms of, I'm only really familiar with DTEX as it relates to like juicing and smoothies, et cetera. Um, and, um, or like having meals provided for you. So I guess what I'm a little bit wary about is it is, it is mostly capsules and a lot of our own, like Tamara alluded to not doing it perfectly the first time she did it. And just in my previous experience with doing TikToks, I was a little bit overwhelmed with all the rules <laughs> and honestly, like just kind of transitioning from, you know, one way to another way with all these very specific things that I'm sure in 40 years of you know your that lifestyle it's you know old hat to you but for someone who's new to it it's very overwhelming so i get that there's instructions i get that there's work to do i'm just really trying to get a bit more specificity in terms of like when you get these capsules that come to your home then what do you do like very basic <laughs> like from the beginning it's mailed to you and then what do you do like are you required to go buy specific foods etc have an instruction sheet and we you know, it comes with a whole little protocol like you'll list different places close to you where you can eat you know i mean where you can buy food and what you can use um but here's the deal when you start the program like say you do my green meal smoothie and then I start you, I put you in different, you start wanting less and less food, but you will be eating. But as you're cleansing, you're going to see that you get close, your stomach starts to shrink. You just don't require as much food. Uh, and remember, I said in the beginning, you can choose if you're vegan to go raw. If you're veg vegetarian, you can go vegan. If you're a meat eater, you can go vegetarian. So you kind of pick the, you kind of pick your spot that works for you that you're ready to grow into next. I also say in the beginning, there's no right or wrong or good or bad or yes or no. And you will find, I know it can feel frustrating and overwhelming, but I like to remind you, if you just show up and do some of it every day, you're going to get results. And these results are going to motivate you to do better the next week or the next week. You know what I'm saying? So one of the rules I have is you can't judge yourself while you're doing it. You can't say, oh, I was supposed to do this and I didn't get it done. What I say in my classes is if you don't get it done, you go, mm -hmm. it's part of the process and you jump back in and do the best you can. There's no right or wrong or good or bad. It's a process. So everybody's body creates their own process. Yes, there are some um, capsules to take. There's a powder in making the juice, but it, it really, it's not a ton of stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? And you don't start everything at once. Week one, we do this. Week two, we add this. Week three, we do this. So I can understand the overwhelming feeling, but I also believe I've designed it for people with this in mind so that they don't feel overwhelmed. Does that help? Uh, I do. I, I have to say, I, I'm not totally convinced from previous experiences, but I'm willing to hear more. Here's the deal. <laughs> You. That's the real deal. I do not yeah. want to convince you. If it feels right in your heart, what I'm saying and what I'm offering, it will evolve for you. But if it doesn't, then don't come on board. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, that's sure. wrong or bad either. You know, everybody, you know, when my kids were in preschool, I was a vegetarian and I was on my way to being a vegan. But I used to kind of laugh at people like me that were so gung-ho about it. You know, I'm really, you know, they put uh, something in the, in the meatloaf or so. I don't know for what it was. I thought it was ridiculous. Uh, because that's where I was in the moment. But I right. just continued to do the best I could. And yeah. my brain, my body, my chemistry changed. And my brain opened. So which yeah. is why I give you everything to do the first week. Because most people would, if I told you everything you had to do the first week, you'd run. Absolutely. No, and, I, and it's not that I haven't done it without results in the past, but different systems. I think what it is, is I find the consistency long term to be very challenging, particularly with family who's not on board. And in integrating and preparing is really like the key part of what's been successful for me in terms of consistent with raw or anything. And it's just, it's a lot of more prep work than the average kind of ways which we're used to it. So, um, so that's, that's where that's coming from. It's not to say that it's not effective or et cetera, but I think. I have an answer for that. Yeah. You know, if you continue to do it and what you're doing different detoxes, 
you will change. You know what I'm saying? Right now you're speaking and working from where your body is, but if you continue to detox, your body, your chemistry, everything changes. I mean, if somebody had told me I'd be doing everything, I'm out in a garden now, you know, growing stuff before I bring it in the house. I lived in a high rise in the city for 30 years, but I'm ready for it now. So your body will take you on the journey. I guess the hardest part for me to help people to understand is if you just relax and let the journey happen and keep showing up, no matter whether you think it's good or bad or right or wrong, you will thrive and the process will work that's meant for you. I, you know, I know that sounds a little out there, but I promise you it will change. Let Thank me just you. add to that and say, I'm excited to do it the second time because my life has, I mean, I know I'm like her publicist and all that, but it's been really incredible the first time. And I follow the instructions pretty much to a T. I just want to do it better. And um, so I'm excited to just get better at it. Um, and it is, I don't want to say it's a lot because it's actually broken down per week, which is pretty easy. And that's what you get as part of the resources. Um, so it really is just like, okay, I can do this for a week. And then she layers on a little bit more, tweaks, tweaks that, layers on something different. And it's been such an incredible journey. And I, and I joke, my boyfriend is not a vegan. And so now our, our fridge is like Karen's products <laughs> is part of my <laughs> and then like his chicken in the drawer down below. Um, okay. So I think are you still on me. I have a food prep book that you can purchase, but all my recipes are online on my YouTube channel for free, but I have a, um, a, a cookbook it's soaky nuts too i'm very original and this side is raw foods and this side is cooked foods so you can kind of you know like i said i want to say all that there's no right or wrong or good or bad it's just the process and that's what we have to relax we're always trying to play the end of the tape am i going to do this forever who knows you know and one of the things that i did that really worked was i spent one day a week it's kind of like my sacred day for me. So I would go to the farmer's market on Saturday and Sunday, even if I just had a bowl of chopped onions and a marinated mushrooms or whatever. And then during the week, I would have a lot of stuff prepared. The green meal smoothie that I recommend you do, I said, get some glass jars, make four or five days worth. So you don't have to get up every morning and open up all the jars and do all the work. Eventually you will want to, but in the beginning, you make it practical for yourself. You know, you're used to reaching in the refrigerator, getting an iced tea or a soda pop. Well, you'll reach in and you'll get your green kamut or you'll get your, you know, but prepare it all in one day too. There are ways to help you change habits. Hi, Ronald. Hi. Uh, my question is that um, I'm uh, doing this. Um, I'm really excited about your program. And, um, but I had a question about uh, medications. I'm taking high blood pressure medication and mm -hmm. I wonder if there's some concerns I should have or should I speak with a doctor before I begin this pro the detox program? Uh, what area do you live in? San Antonio, Texas. Okay, so I don't know anybody there. Uh, well, I will tell you, um, I remember one woman that did the detox class and it was for, she was on high blood pressure medication and toward the, I don't know if it was the second class or whatever, that she started having some problems and she wasn't quite sure what it was. And she went to her doctor and found out the medication was too much. Mm -hmm. I can never tell anybody what to do about their medication. It's nice if you have an integrative doctor that you mm -hmm. can speak with. I may have someone, I have a doctor on staff too that you could speak with here, but you're not in Chicago. Um, but, oh, and I will tell you this. I don't know, did the doctors tell you when they put you on the blood pressure medication that it was gonna make you impotent eventually? Uh, no, uh, they they just prescribe Viagra. Viagra because it's going to make you impotent, and that's how I get a lot of guys. And that's I don't know what your diet is like, but a lot of that is directly related to the animal products that you're taking and sending the blood okay. pressure. So okay. Definitely the detox class will get you off the Viagra, the high blood pressure, and you'll think you're 19 again if you want to. Oh, well, now <laughs> that changes everything. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Okay. I'm all in. <laughs> um, thanks. 
Yeah, thanks, Ronald. Um, so one last question. I'm just going to read it from Deborah. I'm so sorry about the connection. We heard you, but it was really soft. So I'm just going to read it. I have occasional um, bouts with constipation. I saw. Uh, I say maybe because I haven't been officially. I haven't been officially diagnosed. Although also sometimes I experience lower back pain, pain on the right and left side of my legs from the hip down, and the pain alter uh, and the pain alternates. I also have dark circles under my eyes. Um, I'm thinking this detox will really help me. What do you think? Um, so no. after that, after the question, I'll let Karen kind of close it out. But again, thanks for everyone for being here. Um, we have a discount code. I put it in the chat. And um, again, appreciate it. Uh, absolutely, this program was designed for you, in my opinion. Uh, you will, someone with challenges as yours and so many, within the first detox, you are going to see results beyond your wildest dreams. Because most people believe if they haven't been diagnosed with something, they're healthy or just a few diagnoses. I'm going to, I make guarantees. How's that? If you're doing my program, I will make a guarantee that you will look and feel better than you ever dreamed you could. And I hope if you have more questions or you need to hear the message over again, you'll um, join me on the 19th at 5 p.m. or tell your friends and family or anybody that you want to hear something new and different to help change their lives. And I'm so... I'm so appreciative of all of you because I know there's so much in the world to do and there's so much on the internet and there's so many people to follow and do. So I am so grateful and honored that you chose to join me today. And I like to remind people that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where are you gonna live? Thank you.